Hello uh, and welcome again to the next video. Okay, so in this video, we are going to um, calculate, all right, uh, the similar problem as we have earlier, uh, especially on the Harry tire example. And then we translate the calculation into a software, okay. Uh, as always, we try to use the QM4 windows to its maximum. And you can see how much the shortcut we can do, okay, by using this particular software, okay, especially in the randomness of this uh, particular problem that we consider. Okay, so uh, I recommend you also to keep on jotting your previous example, especially on the demand for tires, okay, the values 0, 1 until 5 and also the frequency days. Mm, okay, so now we proceed to the main agenda here. Okay, so we are focusing on the simulation of a Monte Carlo simulation. So you uh, choose the simulation part on your module 3 on your left hand side. Okay, so you just simply put there. And then uh, now your data for simulation, this one is focusing more on the simulation part. Okay, so I'm just putting the title over here, Harry, Tire. And then my number of category. Okay, in this case, you only have the historical data, right? Okay, your historical data uh, is um, in a 20, 200 days, okay, previous data. And then uh, from this 200 days, uh, I, I, I need to recap again uh, what you have, uh, your problem until. Okay, so from this 200 days, uh, zero uh, in most uh, on the frequency of 10 days out of these 200 days, okay, there is no demand for your tire. Um, in a frequency of 20 days out of 200 days, your demand for tire is only one. You are able to sell only one tire. Okay, so poor, right? And then on uh, for the 40 days of your 200 days, your demand for your tire is two. Okay, on a daily basis uh, during those 40 days, all right? Uh, about 60 days, your demand for the tire is 3. Uh, 40 days, 4 and so on. The final one, uh, from 30 days out of your 200 days, the demand for your tire is 5. Okay, the most uh, demand for your tire in one particular day. 30 days of it, uh, 5 tire that you are able to sell. All right, so um, you get that uh, problem okay if you get confused uh, if you want to know more about the implementation especially on the manual labor that you need to do for your simulation purposes you can refer back to the previous uh, video i put in the description down below okay so uh, this is the number of category that you have in mind okay the number of, of category in this case is six because you are dealing with um the demand of your tire, okay, whether your demand is a zero, one, two, up until five, okay. So basically, uh, your demand now is six. So I put six over here, and then you just simply put your number of trials, okay. Um, from our previous lesson, when you do manually your number of trial, uh, I put uh ten times, okay. I want to see ten times the calculation when I put uh the random number inside that ten times. So what will happen to the average value? You, right okay so uh, we are trying to mimic the one that we did earlier okay so in this case i put 10 okay number of trial there row names doesn't matter you just want to know the uh, solutions for your values okay so in this case as in the previous example on your linear programming problem okay you can see it's quite a similar template available around here okay so you do the same thing Okay, what you need right now is your value and your frequency where you already have uh, from the previous uh, historical data that you obtained previously. Okay, so your value, you put a zero for the first category uh, and then one, okay, to highlight the demand for your tires there. Okay, do not forget why you put these numbers and then three, four and five. Okay, what about the frequency? Okay, you put the frequency that is under your care, uh, 10, 20, 40, 60, 80, 90, 
40 and also 30. Okay, so if you sum them up together, you will have 200 uh, valuation. Okay, 200 meaning that uh, you have 200 days of historical data, previous historical data. Okay, so <laughs> what's next? Okay, what's next? Uh, as easy as how you do for your linear programming. Okay, um, you don't need to generate your random number. You don't need to pick automatically pick your gen uh, your random numbers. Uh, and you don't need to even uh, see the uh, the distribution behind your general uh, random numbers. Okay, what you need to do is just click your solve <laughs> voila and then you get the value okay so this is your average uh, value okay and then uh, you can see over here the expected is the value that we calculate manually if we if <laughs> if we are using our uh, original statistical uh, evaluation right uh, and the previous video you notice that my expected value earlier is 2.95 okay uh, and then you can see over here the average over here 3.8 is the expected uh, expected okay uh, is the value that you get the average value that you get if you do this particular calculation uh, put inside the randomness in it uh, and then do this simulation 10 times and get the average okay that is the meaning of getting a 3.8 value over here mm, okay what's interesting eh, about this qm4 windows okay remember back from the previous uh, example the manual labor that you need to do. The previous example, once you need to do it, you have to do it laboriously one by one. Okay, that's why we are just looking at this looking at the example with only 10 trial okay but in this case what's interesting is that if let's say you want to see the behavior of the number of trial more than 10 uh, okay you don't have to do it manually one by one and see the calculation okay all you need to do is just you did you just go to edit data put things as it is uh, you just increase the number of trial easily <laughs> plus zero okay uh see uh okay uh, i need to rem remind earlier when you have 10 trial just now uh your average for your simulation data is 3.8 right okay and see what happened if you increase the number of trial by uh 100 okay you increase the trial more than 10 okay 10 is just like you cannot see the randomness in it that much right okay so we should expect uh your smaller number on trial will not uh, jive nicely with the average value uh, average value meaning that your expected value uh, if you are calculating it uh, in a theoretical sense all right so let's see if you have a number of trial 100 and then you click and then you click uh, solve see uh, these are the value okay the same template but now this value is actually you get it by uh, doing it all over again 100 times and then getting the average and you can see over here your average now here is 2.98 Okay, for 100 trial, your average is 2.98, which is much better than your previous trial if you have 10 trial with your average of 3.8, right? It significantly improved the, um, the tie of the average from your simulation with the expected value that is actually the right value normally, right? Okay. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, so if let's say you feel like, mm, is it true? That's okay. You can always try again. Uh, okay, you can always try again. See, uh, if you do it the same one, number of trial you increase until 100, mm, and then your average does not change a little bit from your 2.98. It is about 3.01, okay, which is just a slight um, difference between the previous one, okay. 2.98, 3.01, just by uh, 0.3 or 0.2, the difference in that. So, if you keep doing it all over again, similar thing happens, all right. 
similar thing happen. So, uh, just out of curiosity, okay, what if I increase the number of trial into a more extensive number of trial? Okay, let's just try because it does not give you any difference whatsoever, right? The computer is doing your calculation. Uh, see, you have 2.98. Okay, so if you notice, if we keep on doing this thing, uh, you can see that uh, the more the more things, uh, the, the more simulation that you do, okay, the number of trial that you do, the more it is uh, more stable, you can see the performance of the valuation. Uh, okay, there are reasons eh, behind that. Okay, the reasons is that uh, you want to... As I said earlier, you always remember the law of large number. Okay, by the end of the day, okay, assuming that you keep repeating the simulation extensively amount of time, a large amount of time considered in your particular iteration, uh, then by the end of the day, you will have a, a good set of value. Okay, the final value, your average value should be quite similar to the correct value that we want isn't it uh, so that is the main concept behind the simulation why we do the simulation and why it is necessary for us to do as many number of simulation or a trial as we can okay and that, that is why uh, as i mentioned in the previous video okay that is why it is not theoretically sound but at least we get something, okay? Because normally we don't have even the expected value. Uh, okay, we cannot calculate in a normal problems, okay? That's why a simulation keep on um, surfacing, okay? In this particular, uh, how we're going to solve a certain particular real world problems, okay? So uh, basically, uh, this is the Monte Carlo simulation, okay, for your early understanding. Okay, uh, I would like also to emphasize, all right, uh, why since this QM for Windows is, you feel like, oh, I can solve all this on my own. Why do I need to learn more about the um, uh, programming language, for example? Okay, hmm, okay, <laughs> uh, there are reasons for that, all right. Uh, the limitation for this particular software, for example, QM for Windows, okay, if you notice, um, it is in the template form and it is a very specific problem that you need to consider. Okay, what I mean specific problem, meaning that once you have this, okay, once you have this problem, for example, you are not able to tweak um, the way your result will be like. Okay, what I mean by that, I mean like this. Okay, if let's say, uh, I want, okay, for example, like this. If I have the, this particular data and I make a number of trial 100, all right, and then I run, I solve. Okay, so I get the average of 3.08, uh, 3.01. Okay, so meaning that if I'm using this sole QM for Windows only, what I'm able to find is only this particular value, 3.001. What if, let's say, I'm a little bit more expert okay than what I originally have okay what if um I'm not satisfied with my values here what if I want to do it 100 okay I want to make a number of trial like this 100 but this 100 I want to repeat this trial 100 trial 100 more time Okay, by right, meaning that I just do the same thing. I have this average 3.01 and then I need to realign to the edit data and then I do one more time and then I get another average and I took all the values for this average, 100 values for my average and I re-average, okay? I make another average out of this average value, okay? Meaning that I have like a double proof, okay? Double proof value for my average, okay? Uh -huh. Okay, so if you notice, if you are doing this kind of tricks, okay? Because you want to double proof your solution, for example, okay? If you are doing this by using QM for window, there is no possibility for you to do it 
automatically. Okay, by right, you have to do it manually as well because it's only able to run one by one. Uh, okay, so this is the example of the discrete, not the discrepancy, but the limitation. Okay, the limitation of using a software such as this, whereby everything is in a template mode. Mm, okay, that is why people are starting to. If you have more simulation that you want to uh, proceed, for example, okay, that is why people starting to uh, get really into R programming, for example, or Python, or even more uh, quite expensive <laughs> software such as SAS, uh, MATLAB, and so on. Okay, the idea is that you uh, you don't have that limitation. Okay, because if you already have the language okay uh, the program the small program for example to simulate the result that you have here if you want to do what i did earlier what, what i mentioned earlier if i if i want to keep on repeating this again with 100 trial for another 100 time what i can do if i have the program is just uh, by introducing the looping uh, side uh, i from zero to n for example and referring to whatever value that you want okay in my case 100 time again with this particular program so i can do it automatically i can cut short the manual labor that i have to include with this particular qm4 windows you get what i mean right okay so this is the um, limitation if you are using a software such as this Mm, but again, <laughs> if you have a very simple uh, problem, uh, not very simple, what I mean, uh, a problem that you don't need, uh, that you are very satisfied, for example, to solve without extensively doing a, a double or triple loop or whatever, or you don't need to like rearrange your programming to fit your needs. If you are happy enough uh, with the problem that you have in hand, and then as long as you are able to transform, translate your problem in this particular template, for example, then that's fine. You can just use this QM4 windows and your life is a little bit easier, okay? You can breathe a little bit better, okay? Because by the end of the day, it cuts short a lot of your manual labor as in how you need to do it one by one in uh, in our previous video just now. Mm, okay, interesting, isn't it? Okay, so uh, just to give some additional information, uh, if you want to know a little bit more about the details of the calculation, you can always refer to the solutions panel over here. There's an individual run. Okay, you can do how they do the iteration uh, one by one to 100 trial and so on. Mm, if you don't mind with the data uh, and then if you want to see the illustration uh, there's a graph results and so on mm. all right so i hope you enjoy this video and i hope you will be able to translate some of the uh, critical or difficult problems uh, into a more understandable and a more practical solutions through the QM4 windows. Okay, so uh, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. All the best.